a very good afternoon to all of you switch on my camera okay a very good afternoon to our today's expert dr nasimuddin sir all the respected faculty members and participants i rishira singh assistant professor ec department of gb pant institute of engineering and technology it is my distinct honor and high privilege to welcome you all to this last session of the third day of aict e training and learning atal academy sponsored one week faculty development program on antenna design fabrication and measurement on behalf of all the faculty members of gb pant institute of engineering and technology i would like to welcome our today's session expert dr nasimuddin sir who will be delivering his talk on metamaterial based wide band circularly polarized antenna designs kindly allow me to give a brief introduction of him before i hand over the session dr nasimuddin sir is a science senior scientist with a star lab under the satellite division dr nasimuddin receives his bsc degree in 1994 from jmi and his mtech and phd degrees in 1998 and 2004 respectively from university of delhi india dr nasimuddin has worked as a senior research fellow 1999 to 2003 in bsc sponsored project and council of scientific and industrial research csir grant senior research fellowship in engineering science at department of electronic science university of delhi india he has worked as an australian pop post doctoral research fellow 2004 to 2006 in awarded discovery project grant from australian research council at the macquarie university australia currently he is working as a scientist at the institute for infocom research singapore He has published 168 journals and conference technical papers. He has edited and contributed a chapter to a book, Microstrip Antennas, published in 2011 by Entech. His research interests include multi-layered microstrip-based structures, millimeter wave, RFID reader, GPS, GNSS satellite, TV by space, RF energy, harvesting systems, ultra wideband. Beam scanning, beam forming, metamaterial, circularly polarized microstrip antennas. He is a senior member of the IEEE and IEEE Antennas and Propagation Society. He was awarded a senior research fellowship from the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Government of India, in Engineering Science, in 2001 to 2003. A Discovery Project Fellowship from the Australian Research Council, from 2004 to 2006. Singapore Manufacturing Federation Award with project name in 2014. and the young scientist award from the international union of radio science ursi in 2005 we are glad to have you sir for this fdp program thank you so much over to you sir thanks sir rishi for long introduction and nice introduction and i would like to thanks uh, professor gautam for and uh, invitations and i would uh, like also thanks Uh, one week uh, this faculty development program on antenna design fabrication and measurement organizing committee so thanks for invitation to be here to present my some work on the and meta material based antenna so now i can share my slide right can you see my slide yes sir it is visible okay okay thank yes, you sir. thank you everyone okay, to uh, this so today i am going to present the meta material meta surface based circular polarized antenna and uh, i am the chair of the singapore mtt ap chap joint chapter and scientist at a star singapore so the meta material uh, based antenna is uh, for me the meta material nothing just uh, loading the capacitance inductance in the series uh, series or shunt so the outline of my presentation motivation why we need meta material or why we need circular polarization and i will give some brief introduction for polarization and circular polarized antenna design and also i will uh, some brief for, for measurement is very important for circular polarized antenna i will give the, some brief introduction of the measurement also and then meta surface what is the meta surface and then i will present the wide band circular polarized antenna using the meta surface and also the uh, meta surface based the miniaturized antenna compact antenna and i will give some uh, examples 
prototypes and measurement and simulation comparison. And lastly, I will conclude my talk. So as you know, the polarization polarization, uh, we can define the orient by using the based on the orientation of the electric field in space for antenna. Polarization means uh, radiated wave in which uh, direction the how the radiated field rotated if uh, is uh, radiated from the antenna. So the antenna polarization is very important for the wireless systems. The, there are the two, three type of polarization. The one is common is the uh, elliptical polarization. The elliptical polarization have the two component like in linear polarization and circular polarization. The linear polarization, we can have the horizontal polarization or vertical polarization or tilted 45 degree tilted polarization. In circular polarization, we have the right hand and left hand. So the we call the sense of the polarization, circular polarization like, like a right hand or left hand. The quality of the circular polar antenna, we have one extra parameter we call the axial ratio. The axial ratio is the just the ratio of the maxima and minima, uh, the E field uh, maximum and mi ratio of the this. If this is the one, you can have the uh, circular, uh, perfect circular polarization. If this is the infinity, we call this is the uh, linear, pol uh, linear polarization. In term of dB, uh, if uh, it's zero, uh, zero dB AR, then we call this is the perfect circular polarization. And around uh, more than 30 or 40 degree, 40 dB, we call this is the linear polarization. So for circular polarization, we need the uh, generate the two orthogonal mode uh, with the almost equal magnitude and uh, 90 degree phase difference. Then you can generate the circular polarization. You can see that this wave going. So XL ratio is the key parameter for circular polarized polarize antenna. Uh, for linear polarization, uh, polarized antenna, XL ratio no value. Only the circular polarization, this is the extra parameter to characterize the circular polarized uh, antenna. So there are some application of circular polarized antenna. First, uh, very important application is the Faraday rotation. If you uh, get the signal from satellite, is uh, uh, is passed through the ionosphere. So ionosphere change the polarization. If you are uh, using the linear polarized antenna for satellite, the polarization of the uh, of the uh, the wave is changed due to the effect of the pol uh, uh, Faraday effect. So for uh, CP circular polarized wave, this effect is the very very uh, no no effect. So this is a very important application for satellite communication, uh, less uh, Faraday effect. And the other is the multipath or interference. So if you the circular polarized wave hit with the some object uh, metallic, the polarization is changed. Means uh, if you hit the right hand circular polarized, it become the left hand circular polarized. So the, the this way you can uh, you can reduce the interference and multipath. The other application is no need the alignment because uh, you need the you know, a communication system. You need the polarization alignment. If you are using the circular polarized antenna, so no need the polarization alignment. This is the very important for uh, application for circular polarized antenna. The other other uh, application is the uh, less polarization effect, or if you have the rain, rain also affect the signal. So, so uh, circular polarized wave is less effective compared to the uh, linear polarized wave. So, if you look this uh, diagram, this is the ionosphere, this is the satellite. If you have the signal from ship to satellite, the, the you can see the polarization is changed, is tilt. If both is linear polarized antenna, you cannot receive the uh, hundred percent signal. So because the due to the polarization, if you look the circular polarized wave, you can get the same same wave, no effect on any polarization because the both mode is the rotating simultaneously. So the no effect of the circular polarized wave, only the effect of the linear polarized wave due to the some uh, magnetic effect or some. So the circular polarized, uh, you have to use the circular polarized antenna for satellite application, ground to satellite applications.
other other very important uh, application for circular polarized antenna is the RFID readers because we don't know the tag in which polarization because mostly the tag is the linear polarized antenna. So the if you go the market or uh, library books, the tag in any direction. So if you have the circular polarized reader based antenna, so you can detect uh, almost all polarized uh, tag antenna. So in any way, uh, the the book in any any like uh, tilted or um, horizontal or vertical, you can you can detect the books. Or in um, market, the if the th the tag antenna in any any direction paste, you can detect. But the if you have the linear polarization, then you have to align the polarization. Very difficult. You cannot de detect the all books or other. So the one of the application of circular polarized antenna is the leader antenna, RFID leader antenna. The other other very good application, if you're using the like uh, wireless power transfer or energy harvesting application, so you have to align the uh, polarization for receiving antenna and transmitting antenna. So. If you look the energy harvesting application, you don't know the wave polarization in the environment surrounding. So the wave in any polarization. So you have to design the one common antenna which can uh, receive the most of the wave. So if you have the, uh, is the in the environment, if you have the different wave like linear, vertical, tilted or circular, right hand, left hand, so the if you want to receive more power or more energy, so you have to have the either dual polarized and dual polarized antenna or dual circular polarized antenna. So you can at least you can receive the fifty percent uh, uh, wave of from uh, power from the environment. Or if you are trans, uh, if you are the uh, some noise. Yeah. If you are uh, using the dedicated source, so you have to align the uh, polarization. If you like uh, receiving antenna is the uh, horizontal polarized, so you have to design the horizontal antenna for receiving the horizontal polarized wave. So the polarization alignment is very important. Uh, if you don't know the polarization of the wave, so you have you better to use the either dual polarized antenna or dual circular polarized antenna to receive most of the energy power waves. This is the uh, very, very important application of the circular polarized antenna. So the now I am coming to the designing of circular polarized antenna. So for micro strip antenna, we can design in three, three ways. Uh, like single feed antenna, uh, single feed or dual feed and sequentially feed. Generally, single feed antenna only needs some asymmetry, either slightly change the um, length and width, so you can generate the two mode with uh, almost equal magnitude and 90 degree phase difference. Like uh, this patch is the nearly square patch, you just feed in the diagonally, you can generate the one mode here and one here and almost equal magnitude and and same is the, if you cut slightly the corner of the square patch this is the square patch you cut the corner you can generate uh, diagonal uh, if you feed the orthogonal you can generate the two mode because it's the slightly change the mode one one this direction one this direction so you can generate the mode for single feed only the problem is the narrow band so how to design for circular polarized antenna is the the one of the challenge how to design the single feed uh, wide band circular polar antenna so for the dual feed i think no any challenge you just uh, uh, excite the uh, two mode with the two feed with 90 degree uh, you have to just put the 90 degree phase difference you can get the perfect circular polarization only the challenge in the single feed how to generate the Circular uh, two mode with equal magnitude and 90 degree phase difference. The other way we can uh, we can design the antenna with the sequentially rotate the either two uh, two element or uh, four element. Like if you have the two element, you just add the uh, one zero and one ninety degree, and 
uh, at the feed. So you can generate the uh, circular polarization or you can have the four patch. You have the four rotating like 0, 90, uh, 180 and 270. You can generate the sequentially circular polarization. Uh, the uh, sequentially rotate, we can get the wider bandwidth. And even you can use the uh, linear polarized element to generate the circular polarized uh, circular polarization using the sequentially rotate. You just uh, add the 0, 90, 180, 270. You can get the circular polarized uh, uh, wide band antenna. Only the this, if you are using the sequentially rotate, only the size will increase. Even uh, dual polarized also, you need the extra uh, footprint for the designing the this hybrid uh, the uh, two feet and with the 90 degree phase difference and the and these are three common way to design the circular polarizer antenna the challenge is here only how to design the single feed wide band circular polarizer antenna because the, if you design the wide band circular polarizer antenna you need to keep the two uh, two mode with the wider ba bandwidth and equal magnitude this is the challenge so the uh, this one is the I just uh, put here. What is the difference if you are using the linear polarized element to generate the circular polarized or circular polarized and, uh, element to generate the circular polarized using the uh, sequentially rotate? If you look here, if you using the linear polarized element to uh, to design the circular polarized array, you will lose some uh, some gain around three dB compared to the if you using the same number of the circular polarized element to design the uh, circular polarized array antenna with same size. So the linear polarized element array is less efficient compared to the circular polarized antenna for designing the array, uh, circular polarized array antenna. So that this is the very uh, typical single feed antenna design. So this is the uh, like a linearly uh, linearly uh, square patch. You have the length of it slightly changed, and you feed the diagonally. You can uh, generate the two mode zero one and one zero. So you can see the in this uh, graph S one one. You can have the two mode right here, one here, one here. So you, this is a very simple antenna design for circular polar antenna. This is the substrate, ground plane, and the just feed. In diagonally, you can generate the circular polarization. The other other simple configuration, if you have the uh, circular patch, you just notch in the this uh, like a diagonal line, this line and this line, or either this line or this line, and feed the orthogonal line. You can generate the circular polarization. This is the just tur truncated corner in diagonal line, and feed along the orthogonal line. And this is the other way. You just add some some extra line in the diagonal line and feed in orthogonal line you generate the two modes with almost equal magnitude that this is the way to design the single feed antenna but th these type of antenna is very narrow band and uh, for this type of antenna you have the two mode and between like one zero zero one then you can get the circular polarized frequency means uh, XL so uh, the X, uh, minimum XL so so minimum XL so you can get the in there the two frequency light two mode uh, FX and XY and by divided by two you can get the circular polarized uh, the circular polarized frequency means uh, minimum XL so for perfect circular polarization minimum XL so should be zero dB so uh, I just compare with the experiment result. So uh, we, uh, I can get the almost at the center of the two mode, the minimum XL so with uh, using the simple antenna and designing. The other other uh, concern of the circular polar antenna, the XL so bandwidth should be within the uh, return loss, 10 dB return loss bandwidth to get the uh, good gain and uh, perfect antenna design. Uh, this is the measurement. How to measure the circular polarization? So the first method is simple. You can measure the uh, if you put the circular polarized antenna here, 
you just put uh, you just measure the one uh, vertical polarized and one horizontal polarized uh, just rotate this horn antenna 0 and 90 degree so you have the two and then compare this is a very simple method but this is not so accurate if you if you measure if you want to measure the accurately circular polarized antenna so you put the circular polarized antenna here and rotate azimuth this uh, 360 degree and this horn antenna should be continuously rotating because the the polarization is changing so if you if your antenna is the circular polarized so you will get like this some repeal in the uh, in the pattern so this repeal the repeal in the pattern it depend and uh, is uh, is the quality of the circular uh, axial ratio is represent the axial ratio value if uh, this is the like a straight line is, is it means is the almost zero so if you look here this line there the axial ratio is uh, around to 10 to 10 to 12 so uh, if you look this one uh, we call this the wide wide beam th uh, 3db axial ratio wider beam it can cover from almost to minus uh, 82 plus 80 so this is the an other method of the measuring the circular polarized antenna you have to have the standard circular polarized transmitting horn antenna like your antenna is the right hand circular polarized so you should have the right hand transmitting horn antenna to measure the antenna there the three method so the best method is the rotating transmitting horn antenna linear polarized horn antenna continuously to characterize the circular polarized antenna this is the best method so you can uh, get the both cut uh, uh, xz and yz so the based on the concept i just discussed with you we have designed a lot of uh, narrow band antenna and uh, just to use the same concept like uh, if you have the diagonally different uh, different radius slot you can generate uh, two more right one here one here and same in this case if you want to miniaturize the antenna you can add the more slot more slots inside the patch radiator and you can uh, reduce the patch size you can uh, you can design the compact antenna or electrically small antenna and so the the concept is only you have to have asymmetry in the diagonal line in all cases, this one also we have the different uh, different size. This slit slightly different size, uh, moving like this, so you can generate the circular polarization. For in this case, that is the circular patch. We just add the one uh, one slit here, like we call E shape, and fit in the diagonal line. So you can generate the two more, one here, one here. So uh, this is also we added some meta material like uh, mushroom type. So we generate this one is very compact antenna. I will discuss it later on some. And if you look this one uh, very, very smartly, this is the st also student work. So we we added the like smaller smaller uh, like the largest uh, smaller smallest like this. We have the some some trick to generate the circular polarization and this is the s shape have some change in the line asymmetry so we can generate very easily circular polarization this uh, this antenna is very popular i think this is the first uh, pap my paper so this the citation also is uh, close to 300 300 so first uh, this is my first antenna design based on this technology so these are the some wideband antenna so for wideband antenna, you have to have the like stack antenna. This is a single feed wideband antenna. So you have the stacking, the radiator and the parasitic patch. So you can generate the wider circular polarized antenna. So we have designed some compact wider circular polarized antenna based on the stacking. And this, in this case, we use all substrate because we want to design the very compact and the very low profile. So these are all very wide man antenna so i will discuss later on some of these antenna in detail the meta surface what is the meta surface meta surface just is the 
uh, the conversion of the three dimensional matter material structures to two dimensional, like two dimensional array of the small unit cell in both um, two dimensional. So the matter surface in the any shape, the only the unit cell size, this is the unit cell, we call the unit cell size should be less than uh, lambda, less than very uh, around uh, close to lambda by 10. So we call this is the unit cell of the matter surface. The matter surface, the uh, you can call the electromagnetic band gap also matter surface or artificial ground plane structure also matter surface, all matter surface, uh, artificial magnetic conductor, reactive impedance surface, high impedance surface, partially reflecting surface, composite left and right hand structure also we call the matter surface. So the for antenna case, either we use the matter surface as the uh, effective ground plane or partial ground plane, or we can use as a radiator. In the radiator or as a reflector also, we can use the as a reflector also matter surface for antenna applications. So the uh, in this uh, work I have. Uh, study uh, different type of the unit cell for meta, uh, meta surface design like rectangular uh, ring slotted or some more slotted and the uh, square also then i have compare which one is the better so the the motivation of this work is to design the low profile single feed wide band circular polarized antenna using meta surface Generally, we uh, we use the for wideband uh, designing either stack antenna or sequentially rotate to uh, rotate antenna or and double sequentially rotate antenna to get the wider bandwidth. So in in this work, we use the meta surface to enhance the uh, circular polarized bandwidth. Uh, you can see this the cross section. We uh, this is the patch radiator. We just add the uh, we call this the partial refractive um, ground plane or some you can say the uh, reactive impedance surface or some um, just I just call it this is a matter surface. So the concept uh, for designing the wide band we got uh, from three highly cited paper. So this is the one of my paper. Uh, I have worked in the Australia. So in this work, we have used the uh, optimize the feed location where the feed we can add uh, to get the wider bandwidth. So we we have a study in this region where we can feed. We just vary the feed to get the wider bandwidth. So the other work I have uh, used in this hybrid technique, uh, Professor Ramaswamy. Uh, he used the meta surface over dipole. So this is not uh, so wide band, but uh, I use this concept. I replace the uh, this dipole to the my this patch radiator and added some slot from this work. So we got this antenna design finally. So the this is the cross section of the our antenna design. The, this is the ground plane and this is the matter surface. We use a uh, FR4 substrate for low cost and this is the radiator. This is the radiator and we, opt, uh, we optimize the feed location on this region and we just vary the uh, this uh, theta to get the optimum feed for the wider bandwidth. And then we have the this uh, uh, slotted matter surface unit. I have a study to get the wider uh, and the phase reflection phase for antenna design, you should have the reflection phase uh, minus 90 to plus 90 with wider bandwidth. And this is the 3D view of the, this antenna. The antenna size is only the 80 mm by 60 mm and the height is 4.8. So these are some dimension and the ground plane size, radiating size, and the aspect. The the for this design, the aspect ratio of the radiating patch is important. 
and then the ring and the, this is the meta surface. Uh, we have used the seven by seven rectangular ring uh, unit cell and uh, the meta surface unit cell aspect ratio is also very important for designing the and uh, there are three parameter. One is the aspect ratio of the radiating patch and aspect ratio of the unit cell and other number of unit cell and uh, this theta the feed location optimization. The three parameter is very important to get the wider bandwidth. So I will discuss one by one in coming slides. So the for I just check the the field distribution to get the uh, knowledge about the rotation of the electric field. This is the zero degree. If you change the nine, uh, 45, you change the 45. And if you have 90 degree, this is 90 degree. This is the 170. So the field, uh, electric field rotation and the antenna is if you change the phase. So it means the patch radiator can generate the circular polarization. This is the one way to check the circular polarization if you are using the software to design the so the first I have studied the unit uh, reflection phase of the unit cell. So you can see the unit cell reflection phase can cover from 1.8 to 4.8, uh, 4.8 or 4.9 gigahertz. So this is the important uh, to design the meta surface antenna. So you have to have checked the first the uh, plus minus 90 degree range of the unit cell. So in this range, you can design the antenna for the uh, good performance. So uh, this one just I compare antenna with and without meta surface. So you can see here very clearly, if you don't have meta surface, so the, the bandwidth is narrow. And the frequency is the center frequency around one uh, 4.5. If you add the meta surface, your frequency shift down center frequency around 3.8 or 4. So it means meta surface doing uh, the impedance bandwidth enhancement and the the size reduction. It means the you are uh, uh, reducing the element size from. Uh, 4.5 to 4 gigahertz center frequency. So the meta surface also uh, miniaturize the antenna size. So if you look at this one, this is the very important for circular polarized antenna for XL ratio. If you look uh, this one, uh, without meta surface is very narrow band. Uh, 3 dB XL ratio band is very narrow, only for uh, only four, uh, around four percent. If you look at the uh, antenna with meta surface, you have the very wide band. If you look this, the three dB bandwidth from from uh, 3.3.58 to 7.4.72. Uh, so the meta surface drastically increased the uh, 3 dB acceleration bandwidth and the other one gain also increase. You can see if without uh, meta surface gain is around 4 dB and if you have meta surface gain can be around 7 dB. So the around 3 dB gain enhancement using the meta surface. So the all parameter is enhanced like uh, compactness of the antenna and the uh, VSWR bandwidth and XLSO, 3 dB XLSO bandwidth and uh, gain. So th this is the perfect uh, comparison for uh, to check the uh, benefit of the circular polarized antenna uh, using the meta surface. So this is the comparison of the radiation pattern. You can see the uh, back lobe also improve and gain improve with and without meta surface in both XZ and YZ plane. Around 3 dB gain improve and the back lobe also, I think uh, more than 3 dB improve, around 3 dB improve. So the meta surface also improve the back lobe and uh, gain, XLSO bandwidth, 
and the VSWR bandwidth and compactness. So the, again, I have compare uh, the uh, structure with the uh, uh, square uh, unit cell. If you look this one, this is the without matter surface. This is our proposed the rectangular uh, unit cell. And this is the, if you have the square unit cell, just I, I just put the square unit cell. You can see here, uh, this is the important actually so uh, graph. If you look uh, with the square unit cell, you you have a very narrow band, almost same as the uh, without meta surface. So only the important thing here, you have the size reduction from 4.25 uh, to 3.75, around 500. Uh, frequencies change. It means you are. Uh, it means the electrically small antenna. The meta surface in any shape can design the electrically small antenna. So you are reducing the frequency. It means the electrically small antenna. So the uh, uh, other gain parameter again uh, also have some effect, but the main effect is here is the actually so. Um, bandwidth is narrow, but uh, is the frequency shift with and without to meta surface. So if you have the square patch uh, meta surface, so it it is clear for for this comparison. You should uh, you have to have the rectangular unit cell for wider circular polarized uh, bandwidth or 3 dB XL ratio bandwidth. So 3 dB XL ratio bandwidth, we also call the circular polarized bandwidth. Because the, if you have the uh, VSWR bandwidth is 100% uh, or XL ratio bandwidth is 1%, so your antenna, circular polarized antenna bandwidth is the 1%. You, you have to characterize the circular polarized bandwidth based on the 3 dB XL ratio bandwidth, not the VSWR bandwidth. Only uh, Excel ratio bandwidth should be within the two two, D, uh, two VSWR range frequency range. So this is the very important figure I have studied. I just uh, study how much how many unit cell number of unit cell you need uh, for wider circular polarized bandwidth. So if you can see here a uh, very uh, up uh, till uh, five by five, you don't have any enhancement of the axial ratio bandwidth. And uh, after, uh, if you have the six by six, drastically change the bandwidth in term of the percentage, five to uh, twenty-five. If you have the seven by seven, you have the optimum one. Then again, change. If you have the eight by eight or ten by ten, is no meaning. So this is the very, very, very important figure I have studied. So that if you have the seven by seven, you can get the optimum. Uh, if you have more, more than that, is useless. Even in the one dB gain bandwidth also. So in it's at uh, uh, seven by seven unit cell, you have the very good one dB gain bandwidth and the three dB XL ratio bandwidth. So we have designed based on this uh, study seven by seven meta surface for wider circular polarized antenna. So this one just to parametric study, if you have the aspect ratio of the radiating patch, uh, if you have the one, you don't have the um, uh, within the three dB range. So the aspect ratio also very important uh, around the 1.3. Uh, you can see here you have the very wide band circular polarized bandwidth. We just vary the this uh, aspect ratio and uh, W uh, WP and LP bit. And the other parameter, the aspect ratio of the unit cell is also very important because uh, if you have the square unit cell, you have narrow bands performance and if you have the rectangular, you have very wide band um, 
axial ratio bandwidth, the GB axial ratio bandwidth. If you change further, we don't have the further change. So this is the optimum, uh, optimum aspect ratio for this design because it, it depends on the uh, uh, the substrate parameter or frequency and uh, type of the antenna you are using. An important parameter of this design is the uh, feed. I just vary the theta, this theta from uh, 0 to 45. So I just put some uh, value here, 10 degree. If you have 10 degree, you don't have the circular polarization. It's very around 90, 9 dB. So I think for based on my study, close to 35 uh, and 30 range, you have some uh, very good uh, circular polarized performance and wider uh, 3 dB acceleration bandwidth. And then uh, other parameter, the distance between the unit cell in uh, X direction and Y direction also have play some uh, some tuning, but is not so sensitive. Uh, if you vary the the dx means the distance between the unit cell in x direction, dy is the distance between the unit cell in the uh, y direction. So this one also not so sensitive, but this have some impact also. These are some guidelines of the design of wideband circular polarized antenna based on the matter surface. So you have uh, some initial dimension, uh, rectangular slot uh, radiator and uh, dielectric const, um, substrate and operating band. So uh, then you have the matter surface cell and the dimension of the rectangular unit cell should be less than and close to lambda by 10. And then you have to check the unit cell Reflection phase should be within. If you uh, if you want to design one to ten, so the unit cell uh, reflection phase should be plus minus ninety degree one to ten. And then you can study the number of units, or how much uh, unit cell you need to de uh, get the desired bandwidth. And then we have the one other parameter, feeding position. You can rotate for get the uh, desired result, targeted results, specification, whatever you have. So these are some guidelines to design the wideband matter surface based and uh, circular polarized antenna. So uh, we have designed and optimized, uh, we have fabricated, and you can see the very, very good agreement with the uh, simulated by CST and measurement. You can see this is the VSWR and this is the Excel ratio. You can see very good. Excel ratio is very sensitive. You cannot get exactly same like uh, in so, game. So, you can get, uh, this is the Excel ratio at the board side. And this is the gain. You can see the very good comparison gain with an uh, simulated by CST and measurement. And this is the efficiency around to 80%. You can get the 80% efficiency in wideband. This, this is the radiation patterns in both XZ and YZ direction plane. Uh, you can see here, you can see the lipid in the this pattern, right? This uh, represents the Excel ratio value. Here, the at both side is almost uh, close to one or uh, close to zero. If the difference is around 0.5 or 0.3 at this, uh, if you look at this side here, the repeal is the more than three here. If you look at this one, is the more than three. So it means here, this side is uh, not so good. Uh, circular polarization. So this side, if you look at this side, it looks like a perfect circular polarized. So th this is the in both cut XZ and YZ and different frequency. And this is a 3.75 and this is the 4.25 and uh, XZ and this is the 
YZ, and we just I just compare with the simulated result. The uh, blue one is the simulated one, and uh, uh, the field. Uh, if you if you want to the like, uh, if you characterize the circular polar antenna, so the beam width of circular polar antenna we characterize based on the this 3 dB X ratio. So. Uh, it uh, here means uh, you have the good circular polarization, but uh, in this uh, here up to here is not so good, right? So your beam width is only the defined like you know, based on the uh, axis, so should be within 3 dB. You can see here only the this is the narrow narrow 3 dB beam width. Uh, here also is the wider. I think low frequency wider beam width compared to the high frequency. So uh, then we have compared with the uh, other uh, related structure, uh, related stru published structure in the literatures. You can see, and uh, there's a different type of the antenna, CRL based, uh, uh, reflective uh, impedance surface based, and more met meta surface based, and dipole. This is the Ramasamy one. Only the bandwidth is the 5.6. And then square patch bandwidth is only 10.4. So the if you look the this comparison, if you look at this dipole, the antenna on the meta surface and the our antenna patch antenna on meta surface, you can see the bandwidth difference. So our antenna bandwidth is the 28.3 3 dB acceleration bandwidth, and this is the dipole based meta surface. And you know, only the 5.6. Uh, you can see that there's a, a 10 dB return loss bandwidth very wide for dipole one, but the acceleration of bandwidth is very low. So the this is the real bandwidth. This is the global bandwidth for the circular polarized antenna. So circular polarized antenna bandwidth based on the acceleration, so not the return loss bandwidth. And uh, if you, if you look the size, the our size. Uh, is slightly uh, less lesser compared to the this antenna and the low profile you can see this is the 0 0.106 our is the 0 0.06 so our antenna is very low profile and uh, compact size and wider bandwidth so the i have uh, and based on this, I have uh, de designed and fabricated and different uh, unit cell uh, I have used in this case and uh, just uh, slot it for and uh, fabricate it. You can see the very good comparison and the wider bandwidth. This is the just uh, I am showing the examples. I have designed the different uh, uh, unit cell based uh, antenna for wider bandwidth and fabricated, tested. And these are the some other one, and this is the just rectangular ones. I just compare the uh, actually so you can see the wider bandwidth and the good agreement with the simulated and measurement. And this is the another some different unit cell, and you can see there are the some slightly different because the the actually is very sensitive. You cannot get exactly the simulated ones. And this is the other different the ring type and uh, some more slotted, so not a big difference for based on my this this study, the unit cell should be rectangular, but uh, in the slot inside is not so much change in the bandwidth or other parameters. So only the condition is the unit cell should be rectangular and patch radiator also should be rectangular. So the next work is the in this case we use the asymmetric meta surface as the radiator, not the not the uh, ground uh, partial ground uh, surface. In this case we use the asymmetric meta surface to get the wider circular polarization. Uh, with the, excited by the our uh, main radiator, uh, the rectangular patch with the diagonally feed. So we, this antenna we have designed for uh, GPS application, GNSS applications, for L-band application. The gain is very high because we use the 
form to increase the gain. Gain is the 9 dB. And we use the form and this is the meta surface layer and this is the patch radiator. And so in this case, uh, we uh, we use the diagonally different size meta surface to enhance the uh, circular polarized bandwidth compared to the in this diagonal line. So this is the concept in this uh, work we have used. So these are the addition, uh, this is the field distribution in different angle like 45, uh, this is the 0, 45, 90, um, 135, and uh, 180. So you can see the 0 and 180 almost same. So you can change the, the cycle is change. So you can confirm the circular polarization based on the field distribution. The other parameter we have compared to to check the circular polarization. So you have to check the two uh, field, E field and uh, Y field, EX and EY, the both mode. So we j I just compared the magnitude. We compare the magnitude uh, with frequency. So you can see around this, uh, around uh, one point six, seven, five, something here, it's almost same but it still can work uh, if you change uh, plus minus three or four. So in this range, uh, this antenna can get the circular polarization. It means this and the other parameter, you have to check the phase difference between the two, two field EX and EY. You can see the phase difference uh, close to the 90 uh, within very wide band. So these two parameters you can check if you are using the um, meta surface as the radiator. If you are using the meta surface as the ground plane reflector, so you have to check the uh, reflection phase. So in this case, you cannot check the reflection phase of unit cell. In this case, we have to check the E field and H field transmission. Two mode. So the, uh, the condition for circular polarization to get the equal magnitude of the two mode e, e, EX and EY with wider bandwidth, with wider frequency range and a 90 degree phase difference with wider frequency range. This is the condition too. So you have to keep the these condition with wider frequency range. Then you can get the uh, wide circular polarized uh, antenna. This is the condition and uh, you have to follow the wider frequency range, then you can design the wide uh, wide band circular polarized antenna. So I just check uh, surface current distribution. You can see the most of uh, current distribution around the meta surface. And then we have um, fabricated because this is the student work. We just uh, in house fabrication, the picture is not so good. So uh, we have compare. You can see the uh, the uh, the matching the impedance uh, matching. You can see here S11. Uh, the matching is very wider, and this is the axial ratio also showing from 1.575 uh, to 1.5 to 1.8. It's very wider, and the gain is very good, very high gain. So the idea for this one to design the high gain antenna. So this is the radiation pattern in the both the X Zen and Y Z uh, plane at 1.7 gigahertz, and you can see the very good agreement between the measurement and simulated. Okay. So this is the other paper from. Uh, some uh, you can see here they also use the meta non uniform meta surface to design the wide circular polarized antenna and they have used the simple patch feed by the coaxial feed and this patch uh, is like a rectangular with truncated corner and to get the wider bandwidth, they use the non-uniform means the size is different. This size and this size is different. 
So this port, uh, this is the without uh, meta surface. This is the with meta surface, and they have compared. You can see here is very big difference. Even uh, the S11, you can see the very narrow, and uh, if you look at the meta surface be, uh, with meta surface, you, can, you have the wider uh, impedance bandwidth. And if you look the Excel ratio bandwidth is very, very big difference with and without meta surface. So the there's a different way to use the meta surface to design the wider circular polarized antenna with different geometry. It depends on the application, you can design different way. So they and they have fabricated and measured. Uh, you can see the very good agreement with measurement and simulation. And this is the Excel ratio. And the, you can see the Excel ratio, very good agreement. And this is the gain. But in this case, the gain drop is very fast at higher frequency. Uh, and these are the some radiation patterns, right hand, left hand measurement. You can see the if the antenna is the right hand circular polarized, you have the uh, and the pole right hand circular polarized antenna. Left hand is the cross pole, and this is the uh, left hand. Uh, this is the right hand pattern. So the oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. So the for circular polarized antenna. The uh, left and right means if your antenna is the right hand uh, circular polarized, it means the left left hand is the cross pole. So you can see here uh, these are the cross pole. So this um, this is the another example. Uh, they have used the slanted, uh, just tilted at 45 degree and uh, just uh, excited by the slot uh, aperture coupled feed uh, for to get the circular polarization so and they have also compared like uh, antenna one is just uh, square type and just rotate the 45 and rectangular uh, unit cell and this is the rectangular ring so they compare three antenna you can see here if, if you have the uh, square patch, you don't have the circular polarization. Because uh, you cannot generate uh, for circular polarization, you have to have some asymmetry because you cannot see here any asymmetry. Uh, you have the slot with the symmetric and the unit cell also symmetry. So you cannot get the circular polarization. So you can see the X L so is around the 40. 40 means is almost linear polarized. So the the second antenna is uh, uh, the rectangular ring, and uh, you can get the uh, the X L so uh, close to three. So you have the circular polarization. So and the, the third antenna is they use the rectangular ring. Uh, you can see this this uh, the black one the very wide uh, axial ratio. So this is the trick in the circular polarized antenna. So you should have some asymmetry with the feet. Uh, if you are the feet in the orthogonal direction, so you have to have the 45, the radiator, either radiator or the meta surface around the 45 degree, uh, some asymmetry to get the circular polarization. So they have uh, uh, designed and then they fabricated and measured. You can see the very good agreement between the measurement and simulated. Okay, oh, yeah. So this is the gain, and this is the matching S11, and this is the actual ratio. And if you look this uh, this pattern. And the uh, cross pole is not so good, and uh, back lobe is very very large, because they are using the uh, slot feed, aperture coupled feed. So aperture coupled feed is the back radiation very strong. Uh, 
so the back lobe is very strong front to back ratio is not so good that's uh, that's why the <coughs> cross pole cross pole is not good you can see here the uh, the the antenna the this antenna is the left hand circular polarized the cross pole is the right hand circular polarized the previous antenna is the right hand circular polarized and the cross pole and the left hand so in the, this in this case the left hand is the uh, antenna co and the right hand is the cross so the this is another example i just showing because the and the meta surface also can be used as they sequentially rotate so they 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 have designed for if you want to the wider band more wider band so you can use the meta surface as the sequentially rotate because the sequentially rotate can enhance the axial ratio bandwidth so they they design the they call this one is the element so they design the circular polarized meta surface based antenna element and then they rotate like 0 um, and 0 90 180 and 270 In this is the like uh, upper. This is also aperture coupled, and they have also compared with the uh, uh, like this is a slot only, and this is the uh, just to square patch, and this the uh, some truncated corner with the slanted patches, and then they they have compared. You can see only slanted patch because this is the asymmetry with the feeding. you can see the asymmetry is 45 degree here with the feed here so the only third antenna with asymmetry can get the axial ratio below 3 you can see the clearly here the other these two antenna these are the linear polarized because the no as no no uh, this is the symmetric so you should have the asymmetry in this direction for radiator or either radiator or either feed so in both case you can get the circular polarization for in this case both is the symmetric feed and the uh, that this radiator is symmetric uh, meta surface so you cannot get the circular polarization so the in this paper the main is the they use the meta surface to further enhance the uh, axial ratio bandwidth uh, uh, using the sequentially rotate meta surface so they have compared both uh, single element and then rotate it one so you can see and uh, the sequentially rotate meta surface enhance the 3 db axial ratio bandwidth compared to the single element so this is the way to further enhance the uh, circular polarized bandwidth if you want to the wider and wider so if you are want to more wider then you can go the again uh, sequentially rotate the only the feeding is very complex then we have to add the phase 90 degree like this they have used the phase difference in the feeding so you have to care the phase difference 0 90 180 and 270 this is a good paper so the next is the uh meta surface we use as a reflector or we call the amc or whatever uh, we use as a reflector for the slot antenna or aperture antenna generally the aperture antenna is the very wider band but to the aperture type antenna is the radius in the bo um, both side so how to make the unidirectional wide band circular polarized antenna so to get this one so we use the to make the unidirectional we use the amc or i, I just call the meta surface and zero uh, reflection uh, meta surface zero reflected uh, meta surface to get the uh, unidirectional radiation so this is we call the artificial magnetic conductor so this is just to we designed for the zero reflection phase here around 6 around 6 gigahertz 
So based on this, uh, if you have the zero reflected phase, you can put the this reflector very close to the radiator. So you can design very low profile antenna, directional antenna using the slot antenna. So I will show you some results. So the generally and the slot aperture antenna is very wide, very wide band characteristics. Even if you're using the circular polarized antenna, you can get the very wide band. Only the problem for the aperture type antenna, uh, bidirectional, you have the uh, radiation both direction. One uh, one direction is the right hand, or other direction in different sense. Means if you have the both side is the right hand, the uh, back side is the left hand. So how to make this antenna directional? So we use the AMC or meta surface to make the make the unidirectional with keep the wider bandwidth characteristics of this uh, slot antenna. So in this work, we have a uh, study to how to minimize this uh, reflector, reflector height, because generally, uh, if you want to put the reflector, you should have the lambda by four or to get the good characteristics. But uh, how to design the uh, very low profile with the reflector, this is the aim of this uh, work. So we have designed the meta surface and uh, use as a reflector. We just use some form in between the reflector and the radiator. So we have designed this and we got, I think, very low profile. You can see here only one uh, 0.19 lambda height, total height in terms of the wavelength. And uh, this one also improve the uh, gain in the one direction, and then we can keep the band wide bandwidth. So uh, I just uh, we just compare and uh, simulated and measurement results performance uh, with uh, uh, AMP artificial magnetic conductor surface. Uh, here I just added one example. They use the reflector. Uh, like perfect reflector, copper. Ref so you can see here, uh, we keep the same, uh, so, uh, the same height to check the effect. Uh, we can get the same gain almost. The you can see the here the difference in the bandwidth. We can have the double, almost double bandwidth with the same height. And this is the benefit of the AMC reflector. So we have uh, fabricated and measured. You can see the radiation pattern. You can see very, very nice Excel ratio. The, this repeal represents the Excel ratio val value. So the air, I think around 0 0.5 or something, a difference. You can see the this difference is uh, represent the Excel ratio. Uh, if you look there, the axle is very bad. You can see the, the more deep in the repeal means the bad is the axle. So means the not good the circular polarization. So for this antenna, at least at the board side is very good, good axle. So the next uh, uh, we have uh, further reduced the thickness this height. We use the double meta surface double EMC surface to further enhance the this profile height to reduce the profile height and enhance the performance. So you can see the the double meta surface. Uh, the this is the below and then upper one in the in between the four in the one patch. So we design like this to design uh, to enhance the performance of the slot radiator wideband slot radiator. You can, uh, you can see here the comparison of metal surface without metal surface oh, and with the uh, perfect reflector. You can see the perfect reflect reflector also can get the wider axial ratio bandwidth. And this is the single layer AMC, the red color and the mm, 
black color is the double layer. So slightly difference between the single layer and double layer in the VSWR bandwidth. But if you look the XL ratio bandwidth, 3 dB XL ratio bandwidth is a big difference in the if you have the perfect means if you have the perfect reflector like copper or other and if you have the single layer uh, meta surface you have the red color you have the still wider and if you have the double layer we can enhance the further enhance the uh, excel so bandwidth so this is the clear comparison with the perfect reflector amc reflector and double layer amc reflector and if you look the radiation patterns in xz plane xz plane this plane uh, you can see the uh, the back lobe also improve around 3 db and this is the yz cut this cut you can see the back lobe uh, improvement with the uh, amc reflector if you have the perfect reflector perfect uh, reflector copper or so you have the more back lobe we have a comp we have a fabricated both uh, double layer uh, amc and the single layer mc this is the single layer amc we just put the with the slot um, below the slot uh, radiator as a reflector and this is the double layer the, this is this comparison is the double layer uh, amc you can see the uh, the very good agreement between uh, between the simulated and measurement for vswr and bandwidth is the 36.2 uh, five five gig uh, five gigahertz to the seven point two gigahertz, and this is the XLSO. As the XLSO is very sensitive, and this is the in-house fabrication, and we use the form. The form height also we cannot make the exactly the same. So there the some uh, some difference in the XLSO measurement and the simulated, and this is the gain, and there is some difference in the higher frequency. You can see here, but uh, we can enhance the performance using the uh, double layer AMC reflector. So this is also very very good paper. If you uh, like to, to do some work on related to this, you go this they, through this paper. It's very good paper. So the, this these are the radiation patterns. You can see the radiation pattern, major radiation pattern by using the spinning, spinning method. So you have the repeal here, right? You can see if you look at this direction around 55, around 30 degree, the, the very, very good acceleration so in all, all frequency, different frequency. But this direction is the uh, direction is the not so good acceleration. So. So uh, if you uh, look the 3 dB XLSO bandwidth, beam width, so very narrow. If you look at both sides, um, because this is the more than three, here is the more than three. So the 3 dB um, beam width is around plus minus 30, around plus minus 30 or 40. So uh, this is the double layer one. We have compared with the other related published structures in the literatures. You can see uh, we have fabricated um, both uh, three uh, perfect uh, ground. We use the uh, uh, copper, copper reflector, this copper plate, and then we have the single AMC and double AM, uh, AMC reflector. We have fabricated three and then compare and we have a one paper from one two paper from literature you can see the difference between the uh, this uh, our proposed uh, double layer amc the bandwidth is the 33.2 compared to the this slot aperture uh, 21 if you look the perfect uh, reflector copper the you cannot get the uh, Excel ratio uh, below 3 dB, but uh, the bandwidth, the 
impedance bandwidth is very large, but you don't have the circular polarization because the problem, if you have the perfect uh, reflector, so the and the reflected uh, reflected signal combined with the both side one is the diff uh, sense of the polarization change. So you cannot get the very good uh, axial ratio if you have the perfect uh, reflector below the uh, slot aperture antenna. So the this is the other one is the equilateral spiral antenna. The size is very big, but the bandwidth is good. And uh, if you look the profile, means the low profile, uh, our antenna design is only 0 0.19 lambda height. And if you look this slot aperture antenna, the height is 0 0.57 or, or 257, means half. Quarter wavelength should be quarter wavelength. And this one also very thick, right? 0 0.2 lambda. So in this the work, the important thing is the how to use the AMC as the reflector to enhance the uh, aperture coupled or slot antenna radiator performance to make the unidirectional. So the next we have a study uh, for AMC different size of uh, different size or different configuration of the unit cells. But if you look the uh, phased uh, reflection, not a big change at the zero reflection. Phase. Only the if you look the plus minus uh, plus minus 145, there are some changes. So we have compare and uh, different uh, unit cell based AMC based uh, slot antenna. You can see perfect reflector is again have the narrow band, but the other have some wider wider uh, acceleration bandwidth. So the based on the our study. Um, ring shape. Uh, ring shape is showing the wider axial ratio bandwidth. Ring shape. So, and this is the radiation pattern that's simulated in this comparison. Uh, you can see here also the the improvement in the back loop using the uh, different different unit cell based AMC and comparison with the perfect uh, reflector. And then uh, we have a study with different type of uh, slot radiator with uh, uh, using the uh, ring slot AMC. So the comparison, you can see the different shape, square, slot and circular slot, hexagon or hexagonal, octagonal. You can see here, cell slightly different, not a big difference. So we have a octagonal or which one is the widest? The, this octagonal, sorry, sorry. So the only slightly difference in the slot shape. The the narrow narrower is the only the square slot. So we have compared uh, and uh, we have de uh, fabricated and compared with major performance. You can see this the hexagonal slot has the wider bandwidth, slightly wider, not a big difference compared to the this square. Square radiator, but the if uh, we keep the uh, profile is the same. The, the study for student, so to make the complete study, so hexagonal slot over the ring type AMC antenna looks better compared to the other. So how much time I have?
So next, uh, uh, I will discuss the uh, metamaterial based antenna, how to reduce the size and uh, uh, how to design the compact antenna with circular polarization. So we use the, to design the compact antenna, we use the RIs, reflective in impedance surface, reactive impedance surface. So the, you can use the different type, various type of uh, unicellular square, square ring or double square ring or circular, circular ring plus or minus Y size or any size. You can use the meta surface to design the compact antenna. So the, this is just uh, the, some how to design the high impedance surface. If you want to further miniaturize the antenna, you can use the like a mushroom type or unicell. You have the uh, unicell and with via. So via uh, further uh, reduce the size, overall size of the meta surface. We call the, this the high impedance surface. So if you want to design the very compact antenna, you can use the mushroom type or uh, but mushroom type the problem you need uh, uh, and this look like a 3d structure so you need a via to ground it via so in this study we have used the reactive impedance surface to reduce the size and enhance some backlog and gain so this paper, I think the first paper is very good and they have a study uh, meta surface for high impedance surface to design the compact antenna, very, very small antenna. So RIS, I think can model by based on the, this uh, capacitance and inductance concept, capacitance and uh, uh, inductance, series inductance. Or and based on this uh, frequency, because you have to study the phase diagram, reflective uh, reflection phase. So based on the reflection phase, you can select the frequency, uh, which frequency, which phase you we have to design for compactness. So in this study, we have done some comparison based on the reflection phase. Uh, which phase we have to select to design the antenna. I will present later on. So this is the one paper from Ito group, Professor Ito group. They they have used the reflective impedance surface with the composite right hand, left hand mushroom type structure to further reduce the size. So and this is the uh, structures. And this is the cross section view you can see here. This is the ground plane, and this is the RIS, reactive impedance surface, and this is the radiator. So, in this radiator, they have added the mushroom type structure. You can see the via, it is a grounded via. The mushroom, this structure can further reduce the size. Uh, you can see this uh, figure, very important figure for comparison. Uh, without RIS and uh, composite right left handed loading. You can see here, this is the frequency. And if you add the, uh, and this is the without RIS. And this is the proposed antenna. So RIS and the uh, composite right left handed loading also have the impact. So this one further reduce the size. So without RIS is here. So it means the this the mushroom structure uh, reduce the frequency lot compared to the RIS. So RIS only just to uh, reduce the slightly frequency. So if you want to the very compact size. So you can add the mushroom type structure in the radiator. So you can design the very compact antenna with circular polarization. So the circular polarization in this case, they have generated 
based on the this loading. You can see this loading is. Uh, uh, is asymmetry not in the center. If you feed here. Uh, and this is the. Uh, if you feed here, so is the not to the align with the feed. So is the uh, is the slightly in the diagonal direction. So is the asymmetry to uh, generate the circular polarization. So this is the next paper also from Ito Group. Very good, and they use the uh, reflective impedance surface, reactive impedance surface, uh, with the uh, Spill drilling regenerator to further reduce the size because if you look the and this uh, spill drilling regenerator is very very compact and you know you can design and uh, this is not uh, circular polarized. So the next uh, this is the my design I have designed. So what I have done in this design, so I have added. Four mushroom type structure in the diagonal direction and feed in the orthogonal direction to get the circular polarization. You can see here uh, in this diagonal direction, slightly larger uh, the, this uh, uh, ring size compared to the this diagonal line. Slightly larger to generate the two mode with the uh, equal magnitude for circular polarization. So for a fair comparison, I have designed same size, uh, same ground plane, circular polarized antenna with truncated corner, and compare with uh, uh, our proposed antenna and with truncated corner antenna. You can see uh, in this graph and the return loss graph, the frequency, regional frequency shift from 1.9 to 1.6. So this is the. This is the reduction due to the this. Uh, we call the. Composite right left handed. Structures. Maybe next talk I will uh, next to uh, tomorrow. I will talk more in this uh, composite le left right hand with the composite uh, right left handed means you have to add the. Uh, left handed. Uh, like uh, series to uh, capistance and sun detect inductance so you can get from this mushroom type structure so th this type of structure you can design the you can miniaturize the antenna size with the uh, smartly you can generate the circular polarization because you just need to need to have the slightly difference the uh, the size of the ring in the diagonal direction. Or you can do the like uh, this is the smaller, bigger, bigger, biggest. You can also generate like this circular polarization. You should have the smart loop. So uh, this is the uh, this is the field distribution. You can see if you change like 0, 45, 90, and 135, you can see the electric field moving with the change in the phase, it means generate the circular polarization. So this is the actual ratio and the gain comparison. You can see and the gain is not much change. If you reduce the frequency, generally the gain, because the antenna become the electrically small, gain is reduced, so slightly reduced, but uh, it almost looks same. You can see here, and the size reduction with almost same gain on the bandwidth, almost same bandwidth. This is the advantage. So the this one, this antenna we have fabricated and measured. You can see the very good agreement between the measurement and the simulated. This is the return loss, simulated and measurement, and this is the excel ratio, and this is the gain, circular polarized gain. So other important thing for circular polarized antenna is the gain unit should be DBIC because the gain of the total gain of the combination of the two two mode gain. So you have to add the 
gain unit differently, not like a DBI. You cannot add the only uh, for linear polarized. You can add uh, DBI, but for circular polarized should be gain unit DBI. C. So you can see the radiation patterns. Uh, very nice uh, excel ratio uh, within very wide beam because we we use and uh, uh, we have designed this antenna for GNSS applications. So for GPS or GNS, you need the very wide coverage. So this antenna almost cover. Uh, if you look, the 3 dB beam width is very wide, almost uh, 180 degree, uh, half hemisphere. So uh, this is the very good uh, excel ratio in all direction. You can see here. The size is the uh, 60 mm by 60 mm, and the height is 5 mm at uh, 1.6 gigahertz. So uh, the excel ratio beam width we are around 140. This excel ratio beam width we call excel ratio beam width. And gain is 4.65. So the uh, next we have to study the if you have the RIS, how to uh, select the frequency, which phase is good for uh, better miniaturizations? Because nobody have studied this, so uh, we have studied this. Uh, to select the you can you can select the frequency in different uh, different uh, reflection phase uh, like uh, this phase a uh, 90 degree 135 degree so this is the frequency so in this frequency you can design the antenna with the same meta surface unit cell uh, uh, reflection phase and then you can see the uh, difference uh, variation for the miniaturization. So in this study, we have designed, we have used a simple truncated corner patch and feed along the orthogonal direction for circular polarization only. And then we fix the meta surface in cell and we selected the different uh, reflection phase. 150, 135, 90, 45, 15. And, uh, and this is the case, the value for the truncated length for circular polarization. And X is the feed location to get the, uh, the impedance matching. And uh, LP is the uh, this length, square patch length, because the different uh, uh, reflection phase, you can see here, and uh, different frequency. So you have to design the different uh, different frequency antenna with uh, four different uh, reflection phase. So we have done this study, and this is the with meta surface and without meta surface. And we have compare, and this is very good uh, study to understand the uh, meta surface phase diagram because uh, we need to uh, check the miniaturization which uh, uh, frequency which phase is giving the um, best miniaturization or larger miniaturization with the uh, good performance so the the main is the uh, this frequency and uh, this is the without meta surface and this is the with meta surface so same size of without meta surface patch and with meta surface. You can see the difference in the frequency and the resonance frequency or circular polarized frequency. Uh, if you don't have the uh, meta surface, uh, you have the 2.7 and with meta surface 2.4. And uh, uh, if you're using the reflection phase 150 degree frequency. So we have a, uh, we have a study simulated in different uh, phase and different uh, circular polarized frequency. So based on the, our study around uh, this uh, phase, uh, phase 45 to 90 is the good 
for the best miniaturization and the uh, best performance. So at, uh, if you design the nine, uh, plus 90 degree, so you can get the 38% miniaturization size reduction. If you design 45, you can get 53, but some performance difference. Uh, you can see the gain also is very important. Uh, you can get the uh, slightly larger gain with the reduction of the uh, antenna size. So this is very important to design this antenna with a uh, reactive impedance surface for miniaturization. The, this phase range is very good because you are enhancing the gain also here. This is a very, very important study. So, is the, oh, sorry, sorry. This is just, I just to compare the reflection phase with the operating frequency. So, if you design the reflection phase uh, where, uh, around 20, uh, 90 to 20, you have the more reduction, frequency reduction. And if you have designed the 45, you don't have any reduction, almost same. So this is a, this figure is very, very important to how to select the reflection phase for uh, design the compact antenna. So this range, this range is very, uh, this is the important for the miniaturization, antenna miniaturization, circular polarization. So the next uh, we have study various type of the radiator with the uh, same RIS, same reactive impedance surface, meta surface. So we have the asymmetric cross slotted. This is the square patch. This asymmetry we added based on the slot. You can see this is the longer compared to the this smaller. And this patch is the symmetric patch. Uh, this, is the, oh, this is the symmetric cross. You can see the uh, same length slot, but slightly difference in the uh, in the length and width. This is the 21.6 and this is the 20.7 only. And this is also same. And uh, this is a square patch, but the asymmetry we added with the slit in different direction is that you can see that some difference uh, in this uh, direction. Oh, then this is the nearly square patch. You can see the width and the width and the length is the slightly difference, 20.6 and this is the 20.21.6 and this is the 20.6. And the same slit, same length slit. And in this case, uh, this is also near, nearly square patch, different length and width. And we added extra layer of the asymmetry based on the slot, different uh, radius slot. And slit is in diagonal direction, almost same. And then we use the truncated corner and other one nearly square patch also can get the circular polarized radiation. So we compare the six patch with the same uh, antenna high or the substrate thickness and the meta surface or reactive impedance surface, and we compare uh, which antenna can give the mode reduction in the frequency, means compactness. So you can see here, uh, asymmetric uh, slot means this slot can give the um, uh, lowest frequency, means more miniaturization compared to the other patch. And this just comparison very uh, table. And uh, if you if you if you look here. Uh, 
If you have the nearly square patch and the truncated uh, corner patch, you have the frequency around 2.7 and the, and the reduction with the uh, other slotted patch with meta surface. The only the uh, issue, if you reduce the frequency more, if you want more compact, only the gain is reduced. You can see here, the gain reduce around 1 dB. If you uh, reduce the frequency from 2.6 uh, 2 to 2.4. So we, uh, we have fabricated this uh, asymmetric uh, slot, square patch antenna, and compare with the measurement. You can see here the measurement. Because we use, uh, we have fabric in house fabrication, uh, we just to use the uh, tape to uh, co combine the antenna and the meta surface. There's some air gap. So you can see the original simulated here, original antenna design, and this is the measurement. So we just uh, add it to check the if any air gap. So we just added the air gap around 0 0.04. So we, we got it almost the same as the uh, measurement. So in this type of antenna design, you should have the proper fabrication. Uh, In-house, if you have the separately fabricated like antenna and uh, the separated fabricated by meta surface, and if you, are, if you are combined, then there's some air gap. So if you want to design this antenna, so you have to go the proper vendor. Uh, they can design multi-layer structure. Then no need to add this air gap tolerance. So this is the extra ratio. Uh, same uh, if you have the add the air gap, you can get the almost same like measurement. So these are the radiation patterns. Because this is the electrically small antenna, so the the beam width is the large for electrically small antenna. You can see very wide wider beam width in the all uh, different frequency. And uh, other uh, other important is the wider 3 dB XL ratio beam width. You know the XL ratio beam width is defined based on the this ripple. If the difference is the less than three, we call the uh, within the 3 dB accelerator of beam width. So it looks like a very wide uh, wide beam width, circular polarized antenna. And generally, the electrically small antenna is the wider beam width because the gain is reduced, so beam width is uh, increased. And we have also added the cross fold here. You can see the cross fold difference. And then we have compare. Uh, all antenna. You can see here, this is the all measurement performance of all antenna. And with uh, some uh, two uh, antenna, I have presented the uh, Eto group, right? We have, I have added here. You can see here the antenna uh, size almost same or compared to the ETO is uh, smaller, but the gain of the our antenna is higher. Five, oh no, sorry, not in this. Uh, this gain, gain is the uh, antenna is higher compared to the this ETO. Because if you add the mushroom, there are the, some loss by adding some capistrance inductance. So there's some loss. You can see the some reduction uh into groups so if you have the nearly square patch the gain is very good 5.6 and truncated patch antenna gain is very good and the size is larger compared to the this the uh, slotted asymmetric cross slotted patch so the if you reduce the size uh, then gain reduce this is the physics so if you have the electrically small antenna Gain will reduce, but the meta surface enhance uh, bit 
again because the, you are adding the meta surface to enhance the uh, the aperture antenna aperture so the next uh, same concept uh, we use we use the different meta surface and the, the j shape or some square shape to design the tri band for uh, gps application gnss to cover the three bands because the lower band is the um, some uh, like 1.2 so the lower lower patch need to the reduction of the size so the this concept we apply here so lower frequency patch we use the meta surface on the this meta surface or the ris reactive impedance surface only affects the size reduction in the lower patch the upper patch is not because for upper patch the lower patch and this uh, first patch is the ground plane of the upper patch so based on this concept uh, we we have designed the uh, tri tri band circular pose, uh, circular polarized antenna for gps application to cover the uh, three band so uh, you can see here very clearly so if you don't have the ris so this one uh, lower frequency is changing this one the, this this band is not changed much so only the lower uh, lower frequency uh, lower antenna affecting the ris and uh, you, if you have a, you don't have the ris so this one not affecting so this is the comparison the simulated result uh, with the different uh, two different uh, RIS surface, J shape, and then square patch. And uh, slightly affect the J cross is the have some impact. So we have used the uh, J cross uh, for for this design. So that this is the reactive impedance surface, and this is the first patch, second, and third and we have uh, combined all th all uh, four layers and then measured there are some difference because uh, this is also in house fabrication and we built in house lab so there are some frequency difference and but uh, we are getting the uh, tri band you can see here 1.575 and and gain also in three band and it almost looks okay for measurement and simulation and then we have compared with the uh, other related structures in the literature with proposed antenna the our antenna size at lower lower band 1.2 gigahertz is the size is the only the 0 0.3 lambda 3 lambda and this antenna can cover the three band with the gain is the 5.53 and uh, lower band is the 2.88 and middle band is 3.2 so the other if you compare the with other antenna the other antenna are uh, very large and the gain is also not so high if you look this one is the almost half wavelength so that this is the just to comparison to other people the men uh, men men take away from this if you reduce the size only the gain is reduced if you want to the multiple antenna you can add the stacking so the this uh, hello uh, this is the another design very simple design so the in this design in, 
in this design in this design we use the asymmetric matter surface as the uh, to generate the circular polarization so we use the square patch and uh, uh, asymmetry asymmetry in the matter surface you can see in this corner we remove the matter surface to generate the two mode and uh, we just use the square patch no any asymmetry, no any asymmetry in the patch we use the, we use the asymmetry in the meta surface so based on that uh, we can also generate the please mute yourself uh, yes apartment please mute yourself so that is the cross section view the ground plane matter surface asymmetric matter surface and uh, square path radiation for and uh, this design this design uh, this is for i think 10 for student student so this is the uh, master student work so in this design we use the asymmetry in the matter surface so uh, radiator is the square path to, to generate the two mode, we use the asymmetry in the matter surface. You can see the matter surface uh, in this corner, in diagonal corner, we remove some uh, some uh, unit cell in this diagonal line. So based on that, we can also uh, we can also generate the two mode and get the circular polarization. So this is a just a different way to and generate the circular polarization using the matter surface or feed or radiator. So the other important thing in the uh, if you are using the uh, below the patch matter surface, so you have to remove the uh, metallic part in the matter surface along the feed line. So you have to have the uh, some uh, uh, remove the circle larger than the feed. To uh, if uh, contact with the matter surface, then some issue. So you have to uh, be careful of this one. So the this is the just uh, um, just for fun. I just use the different way to get the circular polarized antenna design or to generate the two mode with 90 degree phase difference. For for this uh, this design, we just use the matter surface as a asymmetry to generate the two mode and you can uh, either use in the asymmetry in the patch radiator or meta surface or in ground plane uh, also you can add the if you add the uh, slot in the ground plane in the diagonal direction you can also generate the uh, uh, mode uh, two mode the different frequency for the polarization. And we have studied this also. So this is a different way to get the circular polarization, to get the two mode with equal, almost equal magnitude for requirement of circular polarization. So this is the, my last one. Okay. Uh, and we have come, we have fabricated and compare. You can see uh, it's, uh, it's good to agreement. Uh, and uh, in this case, you can see here very perfect circular polarization, a very wider wavelength. So this represents the uh, perfect of the circular polarization at 1.6 gigahertz. You can see almost uh, almost uh, 0 0.5 less than 0 0.5, and the very wide wider wavelength. So if you want to design the wider 3 dB accel uh, accelerator beam bit, then uh, this type of antenna is very good. You can see very nice patterns with the uh, uh, perfect CP at the both sides. Okay, this is last uh, conclusion. So I have uh, discussed uh, different type of the meta surface based uh, antenna and I have discussed uh, how to design the wideband circular polarized antenna using matter surface. And I have discussed uh, some measurement to how to measure and applications and uh, how, how to utilize the matter surface.
get the circular polarization or feed or patch reducer and and there are a lot of application i like circular polarization just uh, i think if you are a student and uh, you just use as a game is very interesting so thank you everyone so if you have anything questions and you can ask oh, yes from audience side please ask anything if you want yeah yeah you can ask anything whatever you want yes anyone It's very, very, very long. <laughs> uh -huh. That was too uh, lengthy. Almost yes. two hours. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, anyone? Do you have any doubt or queries? Sir, how this uh, meta surface uh, uh, influence the performance? How this meta surface is working? Because uh, if you look the antenna, for antenna, and the best antenna is the air, right? If you have the uh, suspended antenna in air substrate or form, best. So the for antenna designer, you have to think how to enhance the aperture, effective aperture. So meta surface uh, for me either use as a enhance the effective aperture or meta surface can be used like a uh, wide i just presented the wide band uh, circular position so how to keep the two mode with the uh, larger frequency range this is very important so the in the meta surface we have to check the phase diagram is very important so how the reflected wave from the meta surface and how the radiation from the meta surface so you have to look uh, look the uh, either you are using the meta surface as a radiator or reflector or the partially uh, reflective ground plane so there uh, there's a different way to check the meta surface unit cell so, so sir, if you are using the meta surface as the radiator so you have to check the mode two mode uh, ex or ey so, sir, in what condition means uh, how we, we can check that this meta surface will work as a radiator or reflector? Uh, the, the phase diagram is very important. First, we have to decide uh, you are using the meta surface as a radiator or the uh, reflector or the partially uh, reflective ground plane. So, if uh, I just presented the slotted uh, antenna. Because if you look, the slotted antenna is the bidirectional. So in that that work, we have make the slot slotted antenna as a unidirectional to add the AMC means zero reflected phase. If you have the zero reflection, means you are not disturbing the both side radiation. If you have the perfect reflector, so you are disturbing because if you have the perfect reflector, your reflective wave is the 180-degree uh, phase change. So if you have the zero zero degree phase, then you don't have the any change. Reflect reflective wave is the zero zero degree. And if you have the perfect ground plane or perfect uh, reflector, you have the uh, means. Uh, if you have the perfect reflector, then you, your circular polarized left hand become the right hand. So it disturbs the performance. This is the important thing. OK, sir. Means uh, phase, uh, phase diagram is uh, important. Very, very important. Phase diagram or the other other one, you can check the impedance. Uh, what is the impedance variation? This uh, this is very important. Sir, because if, you, if, you, if you're designing the wideband antenna, so you have to check the impedance variation. So you have to keep the 90 degree. Sir, is it related with the uh, mu and uh, epsilon also curve? Yes, curve? yes. Uh, epsilon is very important. Thank you, sir. Yes, anyone else? 
Uh, you should have more questions. <laughs> I think uh, there's uh, no question, so we can conclude the session. Yes, anyone? Uh, sir, it was an informative session. Sir, can you give any leads to how we can fabricate? Because most of the issues that we get us when we go for metamaterials, the fabrication has become a major difficulty for us where we don't have a fabrication. Yeah, any yeah. yeah. Because, uh, this, this one I have, I have just uh, presented, right? In a house and the uh, and the, uh, the vendor, right? Uh, if you have the fabrication from the professional vendor, right? You have the very good agreement. I just showing the wide band and the, some uh, student work is not good agreement. So we have, we, we have added the some air gap to get the matching. So the the fabrication is very very important for metal material based because the wavelength, the unit cell size is the less than wavelength. Uh, lambda by 10, around lambda by 10. So the accuracy of the fabrication is very important. So you have to spend the money to professional <laughs> vendor. <laughs> this is another way. <laughs> In fact, even uh, uh, if somebody has a good uh, PCB prototype machine, then then they can fabricate it. Yeah, yeah, they can fabricate because I have done a lot of fabrication in a house and very yeah. good agreement. Mm. So nowadays, a good good uh, precision uh, machines are available. Yeah, yeah. Even my student can uh, fabricate uh, within one one day. We can fabricate, measure everything. We can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's possible. That's possible. Yeah, yeah. But one must have uh, the specific prototype and other things. And I think I just suggest a student if you are attending the student just play the like a game. This is like a game. Mm -hmm. Because if you are doing the research, you cannot get the money, but you can play the game. Oh, but uh, in that, uh, mostly we have the faculty members from different uh, area of the, you can say from uh, different part of India. Oh, that's good. They are faculty members. Okay, faculty member also. Okay. Yeah. So you can contact your nearby institution also who have the PCP program machines, etc. Then uh, you may get fabrication of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the fabrication should be a proper. Yeah, uh, yeah. This type of yeah, any other one? No. So I think now we come to the conclude conclusion of this uh, wonderful session. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Nashimuddin. So we'll again meet tomorrow. Yeah, thank you, sir, uh, everyone. For uh, I think a lot of participants, eh, around uh, 70. Yeah, uh, we have around uh, 200 participants. Oh, that's great. Very good. I was thinking this is a student session, not a no, student. No, no, no. That, that's totally for the faculty members. Oh, faculty members. That's good. Uh -huh. So should uh, should have more questions, right? I don't know why. why so, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering why they are not asking anything. Uh, yeah, I, I want more questions because we can improve ourselves. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So but again, com uh, comment is always improve, right? If you have comment, then improvement is always there. Innovation, comment is an innovation. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I think everyone, so we can meet, I think, tomorrow afternoon. Yes, Same time. So I have sent you one mail, so please uh, uh, reply. Okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll meet tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Our hair is a good night now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Very okay. Much. Thank you. Thank you.